D class. We're back from the SCP tier list after a very long time. Because <laughs> I forgot. But anyway. I yeah. Our battery! <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> for the first SCP, SCP-233 is a 23-sided polyhedron, each face being made up of both an equilateral triangle and a straight line simultaneously. Because of the space-time altering nature of the object, the, ex the exact physical makeup of the object cannot be emulated in three-dimensional or two-dimensional form. SCP-233 has an unusual property of altering the laws of mathematics in its vicinity. I don't know why I had trouble saying that word. Causing rounding errors to occur unless calculated using the base 23 system. Mathematical calculations carried out in the base 23, however, have the benefit of being carried out at 23 times the normal speed. For this reason, destruction of the item has been postponed pending possible integration in, into data expunged. Oh. The difficulty... No. The difficulty of converting binary information into base 23 mathematics aside, the device has already shown its value to the organization. Unfortunately, SCP-233 appears to have a particular violent effect upon occurrences of the number redacted, occurring within its safe zone. Chemical breakdown of the affected object proceeds at a rapid rate. Direct con contact results in immediate destruction of the object in question by breakdown in component atoms within 0.23 seconds. One note. SCP-233 appears to be triggered not by the actual physical properties of the object in question any empirical sense, but in the perceptions of nearby observers. For instance, it is safe to handle SCP-233 using a 2.74 meter long pole, so long as no observers within the danger zone perceive said pole as being redacted feet in length. The reason for this is unknown but the observer effects recorded in classical quantum physics may be involved. So, it's just a time-space breaking object that will Alt-F for you if you do anything involving a redacted number. Yep. It doesn't seem that bad. Whoa. Also... Uh, what's our categorizations again? You haven't started live streaming in Discord, so I don't know. Oh, shit. I know I forgot something. You stinky. Hold on. There you go. Uh, alright, so we have reassigned only one certain group, city, country, continent, XK, and ZK. See, XK is... End uh, of the world. End, ZK end is world reality. We only have one. <laughs> end of reality. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So, what were you about to say, Jerry? Yeah, I would argue it is very dangerous. It's just not very big. It's not gonna wipe out the world, but... Definitely wipe out people. Uh, I'd say probably certain group. Yeah, because they said like ob the observers, as long as they're a certain amount of way, it, can't, it won't do anything. Yeah, and as long as this thing doesn't like try, like doesn't actively try to leave, which it doesn't sound like it does. Yeah. It seems pretty easily containable. Yeah. Just, just don't. Have, that's a lot of pictures. Just yeah. don't have. Just, just make sure no one does anything with that number in its presence, and no one gets Alt F Ford. Yep. <laughs> I feel I like it could murder people, but like you know. Did uh maybe I'm misremembering? Did it say anything about having like a conscious element to it? Is it just an object that kills people for number? Basically, what you just said. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't like, have a conscience. 
like, yeah, so, like, it's, <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, self-explanatory. You have to be an idiot to die to it, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Or ignorant to Oh, you to have to be bright. Effects. Hey. Just fuck around, find out. Well, Dragon, honestly, most, if it wasn't locked up in an SCP foundation, most people who run into it wouldn't have any idea and wouldn't have any reason to have any idea. So they would be innocent victims who weren't warned. True. It's also like, like a certain number thing, and most people don't just randomly start saying random ass numbers. Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> the thing is like if it's that, like if something has to do with that number, like let's just let's just say theoretically, um, let's say there's a containment breach and some industrious motherfucker grabs this thing and takes it into a metropolitan city, right? Mm -hmm. If there is any object, human, anything in the immediate vicinity that has to do with that number, it gets all that board. Let's say perhaps the foundations of a particular building nearby has to do with that number. Alt F4, mm -hmm. building collapses. True. So like as like if it's contained, it's very easily contained and not that big of a danger, but if it gets out, it's dangerous. Yep. Which is why I think it's a certain group because only certain groups are going to be affected by it. Yeah. <laughs> Namely, whatever poor bastards are lined up to test with it. Yeah. Oh, Which is the D class. So right. Yeah. <laughs> it, I got no D class too. Yeah. Anyway, for the next one. SCP-236 appears to be a swarm of near microscopic crabs. Individuals... Near? That's what it says. It says near microscopic. I'm just reading what it says. <laughs> Almost microscopic. Hard to see. Yeah. I know what microscopic is. I'm just like, oh. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. Individuals match no known form of uh, crustacean and elements of their physiology appear to be point of, to an artificial origin. SCP-236 appears to operate under a form of collective intelligence or hive mind. This oh. intelligence appears to grow when individual SCP-236 are in close proximity and dissipate when they are divided. Large swarms appear to exhibit predatory intelligence and become significantly more aggressive than individuals. Swarms show aptitude with problem solving and cir circling tactics and stealth. In addition, swarms appear able to take on the physical aspects of the and appearance of inanimate objects such as doors, chairs, or even complex patterns such as those found in paintings for extended periods of time. This mimicry is near perfect under casual observation and requires detailed observation to detect. Swarms will sometimes even destroy existing objects and replace them in what appears to be an attempt at better disguise. SCP-236 can create additional individuals from any organic matter. This includes wood, cotton, or other materials derived from an organic source. SCP-236 units appear to re remove small portions of matter with their pincers, consume it, and then lay small, spheric eggs, which hatch into new members after 10 minutes. Ugh. Juvenile SCP-236 look identical to adults but are smaller in size and lack the chemicals used in the defensive response. Juveniles reach full adult size after six hours. SCP-236 individuals appear to fear light, rapid movement, or loud noises. This fear is reduced in proportion to the number of units in a swarm, but even large collectives can be startled by a sudden sound or bright, bright light. SCP-236 that are startled when mimicking an object will rapidly break apart in into individual units which will then scatter and hide. Swarm regrouping can take up to 24 hours. When cornered or unable to escape quickly, SCP-236 units will initiate their defense response. This entails a unit rising in 
its pincers and then detonating with an explosion equivalent to 9.06 kilograms of C4 explosive. Initial research suggests that this is the result of an internal chemical reaction involving a mixing of three normally inert chemicals. Collection of these chemicals have been problematic due to the relatively minute size of the storage chambers and the likelihood of startling SCP-236 during the procedure. SCP-236 will use humans or other living things as a resource, provided the swarm is of a sufficient size. Moderate size swarms can convert a whole human being in less than five minutes. Individual SCP-236 have also been observed entering the human body, typically while the subject is asleep, and begin to consume it from the inside out. This behavior, coupled with the mimicry and the defensive response, make SCP-236 very difficult to detect and contain effectively. I actually did not Horrifying. think that it was going to- I did not think it was going to be this strong when I found it. <laughs> it reminds me- okay, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, um, d d there's this one comic issue where- uh, do you know, uh, uh, Man Spider? Do you know who Man Spider is? No. Okay, so Man Spider is pretty much a, a, a different version of Peter Parker, but he gets eaten by a bunch of spiders and then the spiders take on the consciousness of him and then they put on the suit and then they pretty much act like spider-man but they're like a fuck ton of spiders like they're a hive mind of spiders that's what it reminds me of okay oh that's but like more malicious uh, that just feels like actually onto the scp itself yeah I would say it would definitely be different than Man Spider or whatever that was because unlike that, this does not have the consciousness of a human, thus it doesn't have the morals of a human. It has the morals of a highly intelligent crab hive mind. Yeah. yeah. It makes it so much worse. Uh, it's, it's just really angry predatory crab swarm. So, a regular crab. Basically, what this makes me think of, I'm not sure if anyone heard the game of Prey, but those, like, mimicry creatures that disguise as objects and shit. Mm. That's what it makes me like think I, of. I feel like I know the game Prey. Yeah, because you watched me like... play it. Oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. <laughs> but, like, from somewhere else. I feel like I've well, known for it longer, I don't know. Just trying to think of... <laughs> like... <sighs> I feel like, like, as fucked as these things are, I think they could only destroy up to a city. Yeah. See, I'd I say, like... disagree. Think of it like this. They're animals. So if they were able to, es to escape the SCP Foundation too long, they could literally hide and grow themselves. So one... So at one point, yes, they could take down a city, but then they could take down another, and another, and then a country. I say city. But, Not city, but, fuck, country. Like, country threat. But, but they're also so easily startled, and their level of intelligence is based upon how many they have in a swarm. When they get startled, they disperse. Mm. And as such, the collective intelligence drops drastically. Which means say they screw over a city these things are only going to be viable for an extended period of time and fairly like not very frequently changing environments so like that's true so they would destroy cities at most but not a country because it has too many variables yeah and even then i would go so far as to say that the city itself probably has close to enough variables to ensure that they couldn't take it down. Actually, it depends but, on the city. There are yeah, some like it would... cities that have practically no variables. There are other cities like San Francisco where it can be sunshine on one part and rainy on another, warm on one part and cold on another. Yeah, like it it depends on the size of the city. And yeah. not, not just the size, but the 
terrain. Yeah, like, right, and the way that it's made up, yeah. Yeah, like, the reason there's so many variables in San Francisco are because of really tall hills. So basically, yeah. there's a variation of terrain despite the size. Yeah, and on top of that, like, um, depending on the circumstance, I feel that, for instance, these would have a harder time uh, screwing over a city in America where there's a shit ton of cars as compared to a lot of European countries where there's less vehicles and thus less opportunities for loud noises and bright lights to just suddenly happen. And as such, startling the things. Yeah. So... Angry yeah. murder crab proof. What? Are you saying America is angry murder crab proof? <laughs> I am not saying it's angry. I am not saying it's angry murder crap proof. I'm saying that our over, our over reliance upon automobiles might actually help us if these things existed, <laughs> because it would add in more bright lights and honking horns to startle the little shits. I'm sorry, for accusing you of saying that the United States was angry murder crab proof. <laughs> the u.s is like a lot of proof of things new york is perfectly murder crab proof though <laughs> no i feel well, like how would sewage. even a murder crab get to new york though <laughs> well yeah that that's also <laughs> like I'm guessing that based upon and that's the other thing like based upon the context it doesn't sound like this is like, the reason why this is a Keter class is because the Foundation can't totally contain it. Like, these things are still out and about in the world, and yet they're still relatively unknown. Like, if these things were able to just, like, worst case scenario, destroy a city, that's where it's like, this is an unbelievable... It, it would have taken the SCP Foundation, like, taking a nap for 25 years for something that catastrophic to happen so and plus i think yeah i i think it's on the low end of city yeah and plus if it, if they did destroy a city they'll probably do what they do with 610 and completely barricade it yeah so yeah low end of city all right let me find the, the picture after over the hundreds of pictures I have. <laughs> Find a little crab in a petri dish. Oh, there it is. There we go. This super tiny crab boy. Look at that angry, malicious predator <laughs> creature. <laughs> oh, you guys are going to have fun with this one. SCP-236-FR is an unidentified linear located in the Norwegian Sea at coordinates redacted. SCP-236-FR is completely stationary and has not moved from its location since its, its discovery in 1996. 236-FR is located in the center of an exceptionally strong thunderstorm approximately 3 kilometers in diameter. The storm is a force 11 on the Beaufort scale, causing a raging sea and preventing sea faring within a distance of 20 kilometers. However, within 300 meters of 236 FR itself, the sea is completely calm and all waves break at this point. Lightning bolts being abnormally powerful and occurring at an average rate of 8 bolts per minute are always directed towards 236 FR but seem to disappear 300 meters away from it. This area is presumed to be a zero in a Beaufort scale. The weather conditions around 236FR remain unchanged since 1996. 236FR cannot be photographed or filmed, and its physically pres physical presence cannot be recorded by any technological devices. It is possible to access the calm er area surrounding 236FR 
via submarine, but every watercraft attempting to approach closer than 150 meters to 236 FR will be instantaneously moved 150 meters across the area, opposite of its initial direction. Due to this, it is impossible to approach 236 FR. Visual reports and drawings made by observers at the edge of the calm area agree that 236 FR appears to be 160 meters long and 20 meters wide, it has three masts and a funnel, lacks portholes, and displays the name the Perry on its hull. Dutch maritime registers state that a disgusted French linear of the same name hurriedly sailed off in the middle of the night on September 17, 1993, without providing more details. 236FR passengers are referred to as 236FR-2. All entities of within SCP-236-FR are identical, resembling humanoids that measure approximately 1.65 meters in height. Their skin is pale without noticeable blemishes, their pupils are entirely black, and they do not possess any form of facial hair such as a beard, eyelashes, brows, or sideburns. All entities are clothed in a gray outfit covering their entire body, extending from their soldiers to their feet. The outfit has long sleeves and falls to the bottom of the legs, subsuming the feet to form shoes. The material it is made from is undetermined. The outfits possess no fastenings, pockets, or any other distinguishable features. The entities within SCP-236-FR repeat the same activities each day on a loop and have been doing so since 1996. The activities observed on the deck include moving, lying on the ground, sitting, and staring at the sea. It should be noted that even if 236-FR-2 instances stare at the thunderstorm or foundation personnel, they seem not to notice them and remain expressionless at all times. The number of instances of S SCP-236-FR-2 is estimated at 121 specimens. It remains an estimate due to the entities all being identical, the entities repeating the same movements continuously and only the deck being visible. <sighs> Antithropal events occur once every four years on February 29th on each leap year. Each event consists of a normally inversion in a 300 meter area around SCP-236-FR, followed by the reality collapsing. The cause of a anthropal events is unknown and they are as dangerous as they are unpredictable. Anthropal events occur precisely on February 29th from uh, 1 second to 23.59.59 on site teams are to handle the containment of the event's consequences without regard to SCP-236-FR or SCP-236-FR-2. Both will sp spontaneously reappear in, in their place in an original state on March 1st. All right. That it? Yep. Okay. So it's a boat with a bunch of really weird people on it, and Thor is really pissed at them. <laughs> that's that's my conclusions. This, this doesn't seem all that dangerous. Like in the like it's it's in the in the immediate area. You could get fucked up at that specific time. That happens every four years. But yeah. otherwise, like, the biggest threat is just people sailing up to it, going, what the fuck is that? And then getting super confused and then leaving. Yeah, I would put it at certain groups because it seems like the only way you'll get hurt is if you're stupid. Yeah. Like, 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 it's, it's like, you have to, sh like... It's either they're, like, uh, SCP personnel and they're stupid, or just 
unbelievably unlucky Maritimers <laughs> that show up at the exact wrong place at the exact wrong time on a leap year. <laughs> right. Well, well, you would have to tell how weird the people on the ship look and still go there. Right. Yeah. Well, no, that, if I remember correctly, like, that information was more taken from, like, uh, observing it closely from yeah. the distance that they can. Like, for the most part, to anyone else, this is just gonna look like a really violent storm. It's yeah. just in that one spot. Like, if you have a ship, you probably have equipment to look at things closer. That's uh, one of those basic ship equipment yeah. things. So Fair. you have Fair. to use that. Look at them to see if they're in danger and then see that they don't look quite human and still go there. Oh, these these weird, like, pale black-eyed things just keep staring at us unexpressively. Maybe we should, maybe we should take our boat closer to them to see how they're doing. Imagine, imagine being that. <laughs> imagine Yay! being that stupid. Yes. Let's go to I... it. <laughs> You know, I was going to make a joke about you being dumb enough to do that, and then you just made the joke for me. Uh, right? You're a smarter woman than that. So, are we right? thinking, like, three classifies, because I can't really do anything unless you're stupid? Honestly, like, the sheer, like, the <laughs> chances of someone being that stupid, and, like... But hatchet, hatchet, think of... The stupidity that, that people have shown in recent times. That's fair. Are you sure people aren't that stupid? Look. And then again, there's also storm watchers. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Also, people who are obsessed with trying to find the supernatural that uh, would be stupid enough to see things like those people and go, I want to go there. But yeah, yeah, but again, it's. Again, it's. It's the uh, SCP Foundation's job to keep an eye on the thing and make sure no one gets close enough for it to screw screw I them up. Those people like that are so stupid they would never be able to get past the SCP Foundation. Yeah. I think yes. Honestly, yes. <laughs> Again, it would take an unbelievable lapse in the Foundation's protocols for these dipshits to make it all the way through. The bottom tier of danger levels. Oh. So, let's say, how about, I, I don't want to reclassify it because it's definitely a problem. So let's just say only one. There's that one guy who found it and got fucked up. <laughs> Alright. Wait, find the storm picture. There's multiple storm pictures. <laughs> a lot of storm pictures. There's a lot of anomalous storms. One SCP that is literally a storm, but also people. I know, it's like a bunch of lightning in it. Did I not put it in yet? <laughs> Better you just need to look for the right storm picture. There's, there's a few storm SCPs. Yes, I'm looking for the one that has a bunch of lightning. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> there we go. Only one. In honor of the one guy who decided to go super close to the pale, black-eyed humanoid surrounded by lightning. Ah, here's the one that was reclassified, as I talked about. Oh, fun. SCP-238, which is now Euclid, but I mean, we're already going to put it reassigned. But we might as well see what it is. S Description. SCP-238 refers to an extensive network of underground tunnels and chambers theorized to exist within a pocket dimension outside of our prime reality. To date, the only known entrance to SCP-238 is through an 
intricately carved stone structure discovered in a cave in on Sh Shemeta Island, Russia. Despite multiple attempts to map the entire entirety of SCP-238, it is not currently known how extensive the SCP-238 facility is. While the area immediately surrounding the entrance to SCP-238 appears to be carved from rock similar to in composition to that of found in Shemeta Island region, the composition shifts rad radically the further into the facility one explores. Samples taken periodically throughout the explored areas of the complex have displayed internal properties similar to rock formations found throughout the Ural, Baltic, and Mediterranean substrata. Additionally, significant portions of the SV-238 complex appear to be comprised of, a, of organic tissue, while a majority of this tissue consists of calcified bone. There are some, some sections of this facility substructure that retain characteristics most commonly found in still living human tissue. It's just an it's just a labyrinth. It's just a fleshy it's 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 just a fleshy maze cave. Yeah. Why was this ever a keter? I don't know what it's gonna be. It's gonna like it, it doesn't try to escape. It does. It doesn't try to get out of the box. It doesn't occasionally break the box accidentally. It's just a goddamn cave that's weird and it's there. Why was this either? Are you okay? <laughs> well, we know why it's reclassified. Yeah, because it was stupid. Also, why? Why is this even a Euclid? Yeah. I like, don't know. like this doesn't try to get out of the box. It just sits there. It's what? just a f maze. There are certain things I could see as Euclid that doesn't really move, like SCP-3000. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, like, generally speaking, those things have a certain level of particular danger that makes them unpredictable. All you have to do is barricade this cave. Problem solved. Just have a couple guys with guns outside the cave. No one allowed in. Bam. This isn't a threat. Oh wait, apparently on Discover- here, Here's something from Discovery of finding it. A Foundation team sent to investigate the report found a receding Schmidt ice cap and exposed an entrance to SCP-238 cave and a Division P containment barrier has been recently breached by unknown entities. Oh, okay, so, wow. so you just did- yeah. Oh, so you didn't give all the information. Now I look like a dipshit in public. No, it was it was buried in there. It, it at first when I looked at the discovery, it didn't show anything. Then I saw that I was like, oh, oh, and apparently no members of the Russian survey team were found. They're all dead. <laughs> okay, now I can understand why it's a Euclid. So. It's probably a maze that's connected to other realities. And that's why we can't go through everything. Okay, fair. That's okay, that's fair enough. So, point being reclassified, let's move on. Yeah. Let me just let my blood pressure <laughs> set settle down a bit after my hyperbolic rant. Also, what do you think of the picture right here? how beautiful the cave looks uh i can barely see it because your screen is small oh i should probably i should be able to take I send a picture to you of what it looks like hold on all right Oh no, goblins want to eat me. <laughs> huh. That's just a friggin' tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we know it looks like. Just, just a pretty ordinary tunnel. 
No, this one I think um, Jerry already knows what this one is. But anyway, next one. SCP-239 appears to be an, an 8-year-old girl, 1 meter in height and 20 kilograms in weight. Subject has shoulder-length blonde hair. Upon closer inspection, the subject's eyes shimmer a gray-green shade. Subject seems to be seems to emit a previously undiscovered form of radiation, which has been named redacted. These waves seem to be harmless in low concentrations, but in higher concentrations, they could break down matter on a sub subatomic level. SCP-239 seemingly has the ability to do whatever she expresses a will to do. Put simply, the subject can do anything that she truly wants to do on a basal psychological level as long as she is conscious. Fortunately, she only seems to be able to affect herself and her immediate surroundings. Therefore, if she can see it, she can change it. It would, it would not be the most prudent course of action, however... To try to test how powerful she can be, she seems to be able to create and affect living matter. For example, when a D-class personnel accidentally caused her harm, she, sim she simply wished him away. Fortunately, when the subject was made to feel guilty for what she had done, she wished him back. SCP-239's self-preservation instinct makes her virtually invincible when she is conscious. Subject's skin cannot be punctured by anything excepting SCP-148. As a method of controlling the subject's ability, she has been told that she is a witch. This, besides proving it moral greatly, makes her believe that she is unable to use her abilities outside of a pre-approved list of spells given to her by the SCP Foundation. This will hopefully prevent any and all attempting escapes. However, the subject is to be kept calm at all times to prevent any subconscious will of harm to herself or others. Okay, yeah, I've heard of this one. And it is Keter. Because, most likely, because of her power. Well, well yeah. she She's a little girl that could just wish that everything in her immediate vicinity turns to candy. And that would happen. Yep. That's kind of, that, that's... That's pretty dangerous. I guess now my question is, how fast does angry little girl move? <laughs> if she, the... like... Like, if she got super pissed and wanted to start <laughs> wrecking havoc, how fast would she be able to move? Oh. Uh... I, I, could... I don't recall there being stories of her getting angry. No, Dr. Cliff did try to kill her. Oh, of course he did. Yeah, yeah, basically, you know what he did, though? He released 682, so the Foundation would be too occupied. Oh, was that the story where 682 just kind of chilled out with them? Yeah, pretty much. But Yeah, yeah that, that did not work, thankfully. And it's also, that's also how uh, Kondraki died. Because he tried <laughs> to stop Clef. Point... That makes sense. My, my, my point is that like i'm trying to gauge her potential <laughs> overall danger mm -hmm. if she for some reason just snapped right who like snap though oh aderna hi <laughs> <laughs> uh i think you already know this one but we're talking about the witch child the one <clears throat> who can if she thinks it, it and sees it it'll happen like <laughs> And Hatchet is talking like, what if they snapped? And I'm saying, I, I don't think they would ever snap. That's, yeah, I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah. I guess a part of me just thinks that, like, obviously it's the foundation. They're going to do whatever to help keep things in check. But she's still living a life of captivity. Like, oh, well, yeah. just because they aren't a bad child doesn't mean they aren't dangerous. Yeah. Her powers yeah. are still valid. And also, it also depends on the GOC and the Serpent's Hand if they figure, if they find out about the Witch Child. Oh, well. 
or even the chaos insurgency. Oh come yeah. on, she's not even a bad child. <laughs> well, no, that, like, that's like she's not a bad kid. We all I'm agree with the that. The chaos insurgency would be worse because <laughs> aren't they the group that literally kills every SCP they get? That would. Oh no. Not. I don't think they kill everything. Okay. I think they also use SCPs as well. Because yeah. they use the Spear of the they Non-Believer, a... and they use something else. I forgot what it was. Okay, so the organization most likely to murder SCPs. Yeah. <laughs> they are, as you would expect, completely inconsistent. Yeah. Because of course they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I guess my... Well, actually, for starters, does she, like, actually age? Um, hold on, let me see. It doesn't seem like she age. Uh, it seems like she ages and everything. Like a normal Be person. And again, like, that's where I start to question. If she ages like a normal person, how long do you think it will take a normal person to start wanting to wreck shit if they're kept within some level of captivity for an extended period of time for absolutely yeah. no goddamn reason other than the way that she exists? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The wish child created Santa Claus. And the, and the foundation can't catch it because of his magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, kids tend to. I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> kind of just makes sense that a kid would believe in Santa Claus. Uh huh. Now, is the Santa Claus good or bad is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is this happy Santa Claus going around giving gifts or is it angry Santa Claus going around dropping nukes? Like, which Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, um, the Yule Man. Like, kind of oh, bad. Oh, that's true. <laughs> or, or like... No, I'm just, ima I'm just imagining Santa Claus as being a bomber. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong with me? Most traditional Santa, it still wouldn't be the best because traditional Santa also had uh, someone behind him that would punish Krampus. children who were misbehaving. Oh, yeah, Krampus. right. Krampus. Mr. Crampy Boy, that, that part about Santa lore that is really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because. It, it feels like most things that are largely Christian based end up turning fucked up. Oh. No so, offense. St. Nicholas, where he, he uh, took two boys who were murdered and pickled and brought them back to life. So, Santa and Santa is technically oh. also a necromancer. Oh my. Oh, interesting. That's really interesting. Okay. Okay. Plus, plus Saint Nicholas. Uh, the, my favorite detail is the fact that he was also the patron saint of prostitutes, because he was known to, uh, on certain days, toss money in bags down the chimneys of brothels so that the ladies could actually make a living and survive. That's which is fucking to, awesome. Yeah, which is to say, Saint Nicholas based. Yep. Yep. Okay. Based yep. Nicholas. So yep. here's the thing. Yep. Uh, the thing about Dr. Clef's report, he tried to use SCP-148, which is the telekill te alloy, which is, oh. which can kill anomalies, and tried to use the chef's knife, which makes anyone who touches it go psychotic. Oh yeah, I remember that thing. Just an asshole. Yeah, Bluff is kind of just an asshole. He used to work for the GOC. That explains it. Uh... I guess, like, back on track. I think the worst possible scenario regarding her could easily be an XK. I think that it's highly unlikely. Yeah. But, 
like if she fell into the wrong hands or if she grew up and became super pissed that she spent her entire life in captivity and decided to just fuck shit up, she could be incredibly dangerous. Yeah. Apparently from the article it says that the Foundation had her from birth. Mm. So, they had her for eight years. Mm. Right. So, and like simultaneously assuming that she's raised in a proper, like in a good manner and she has a good life, she could simultaneously be one of the greatest forces for good within this SCP Foundation possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it, it seems feasibly possible for her to, if given the right circumstances, either neutralize or just flat out wish out of existence a lot of the most dangerous things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she could, like, wish out of existence, like, the motherfucking, uh, what's it? The f motherfucking, like, what's his name? Are you thinking the, are you thinking the, the lizard? No, no. The, like, father, the father of, of uh, the father of the lizard and the father of, like, Scarlet now. King. Oh, and then, yeah, the like, Scarlet, yeah, Scarlet King. King. I mean, potentially. Here's one thing that, that, that started terrifying me is technically the foundation has two uh real extremely powerful reality benders that they're worrying about one is this child mm. and the other is laffy what if <laughs> laffy fears about the child oh my <laughs> laffy's such, Laffy such a bizarre and eccentric being though that like, yeah. like he causes problems, but he's not like an extended. Let's focus on the girl. Yeah. Anyway. My brain. Anyway. Yeah. He, so he, he causes problems, but he's not like the worst person in the world. Yeah, yeah, he's just a really sick fuck with, with, powers. Yeah. Anyway, uh, given like the worst case scenario, I think she would be an XK class. But I doubt she it would ever come to that. The power to be that, but she doesn't have the heart to be something like that. I feel. Yeah. Well, so... yeah, but I, like, like again, she we're, we're like no existence. But even if she wouldn't, she she has that ability. Yeah, which is why I think she belongs in that category. So XK got it. But yeah, if I remember correctly, I heard that story about St. Nicholas from my Catholic uh, therapist. Like, we were just talking about the stories attributed to different saints and mostly being frustrated, but then he just dropped that bombshell about St. Nicholas. And I thought that was super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. On to the next thing. SCP. SCP-255 is an anomalous infectious phenomenon of extraterrestrial origin, manifesting in most living subjects as a neurological disorder with varying sy sy symptoms. Eligible characters of SCP-255 have thus been far been observed to be organisms possessing a cerebral cortex with approximately uh, uh, less than or equal to 5.5 4 billion neurons. Experimentation oh, has determined that the species is capable of contracting SCP-255, including humans, chimpanzees, African elephants, bottlenose dolphins, false killer whales, and others. In non-human carriers, SCP-255 causes, through unknown means, degeneration of motor neurons and nerve cells. The rate of degeneration and severity of related symptoms is inversely related to the number of neurons the subject possesses in the cerebral cortex, with less neurologically developed organisms displaying the most debilitating effects. The effects of SCP-255 on humans, however, is markedly more complex. 
When degradation of brain cells and nervous system has been noted on a limited basis in humans, a range of more unusual symptoms occur in these subjects. Individuals affected by SCP-255 can be rarely be diagnosed through EEG observation and confirmed by a varied markers and measurements of neurological activity. Outbreaks of SCP-255 can coincide those close flybys of 3,214 hybris, a relationship that, that was theorized using advanced statistical model, models following the second outbreak in 1965 and confirmed during the asteroid's 1986 close approach. Observation of 3,214 hubris has determined it to be an approximately 110 meter C type asteroid with no anomalous properties observed at this time. The nature of the orbit of 3,214 hubris brings it to close approaches within Earth once every 11 years. Wow. So it's an alien virus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a alias brain disease that keeps getting dive bombed onto Earth thanks to an asteroid. Yep. Well, that's. Dude, we that's yeah. fun. Um, Wait, why didn't, why didn't the Foundation just destroy the asteroid? I feel well, like that could. Well, right. That, that could be worse. I agree, oh, yes. that could be worse than there are cases where if you destroy the top, the, where the infection came from, you don't destroy it right, it can actually cause further infection. I don't yeah. think the SCP Foundation know enough about the virus to know if they could safely destroy the asteroid without it causing it to spread further. Yeah, and also, surpri surprising also, they it might not know if they might not know if there's like a alien species on the asteroid that they would be destroying either. True. Surprisingly enough, Bright, while certain stories might contradict this, the SCP Foundation on a good day, their first response to something isn't blow it up. <laughs> I mean, Bright's first response to most things are blowing it yeah, up. Yeah, that's Bright's response, but not the SCP <laughs> Foundation. Not as a whole. Yeah, Bright, yeah. Not the which Foundation. Is it, which is why it's very good that Bright does not we, run the SCP remember, Foundation. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, and Protect. Yeah. Their job isn't to destroy, it's to contain. Remember, yeah. another group, another organization made the mistake of trying to destroy a harmless chair. Then it became less than harmless. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. Oh, the, that story makes me so sad. Yeah, yeah. It, it was literally a chair that wanted to make people happy by help, by having them sit in it. And then the organization's like, this is an unsecurable thing. We must destroy it. Then yeah. they turned it into Murder Chair, who, when well, startled and angry, well... I don't think the, ch the chair isn't angry. It, it's got PTSD. That, it's, that's, that's a better way to put it's it. It's what yeah. needs therapy. And it gets therapy at the SCP Foundation, as mulch. And it's happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just wants to be useful. And then some fucks put it in a wood chipper and mm -hmm. made it traumatized so now <laughs> if it's scared it might just decide to materialize inside someone's esophagus it, oh, it's yeah. like it's like some of those weird people on tiktok it just wants to be sat on dragon no 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 you are not only child but this is a public <laughs> setting cease <laughs> And, and also, it's this isn't an 18. Funny. This isn't Actually, even. That's. Yeah. That's a public. They were not allowed to have a public until you became yep. 18 or plus. Yep. Which will wait, be what, in wait, like two years. What does, wait, what does the plus mean? What the, is older, plus just like. Older than 18. Yeah, that the means elders. older than 18. The I'm elders. Not an elder. The elders council. 
Dragon Hush. So where should we put Elder the uh the alien virus? Yeah, let's get back on topic. Penguin. Penguin. Hell. You do know that you will be an elder someday too, right? <gasps> if I live that long. Jesus. Most things in life are ifs. I don't even mean that in like a depressing way, it's just like an if thing. You know? Anyway. <laughs> so, the SCP Foundation, uh, based upon the context of the article, has actually dealt with outbreaks of this stuff before and contained it. So, I'd say worst case scenario, uh, you know, like on one hand, I'm thinking, uh, if there, if if there's anything that COVID nineteen has taught us, oh, it's yeah. that it, there will always be dipshits who actively cause the spreading of a virus, but simultaneously, if COVID nineteen existed in SCP universe and was anomalous, it would have been taken care of instantly. Oh, it does exist in the SCP universe. Oh no. Yeah, there's a rule for Dr. Bright allowing them to be themselves to anyone who doesn't wash their hands. Damn. <laughs> Either way, I'd say probably country in the worst case scenario. I mean, it makes sense because we already have a few, two viral infections there. One's the mold, oh, one's really? the blood flies. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah. Just another, just another country killer. Potentially. <clears throat> I, I feel like the SCP Foundation is on top of things well enough to keep it from getting to that point, but that's like the worst case scenario. I mean, they're still having troubles with 610, since it keeps evolving. Well, yeah, but that's a, that's a very different, that's a very different <laughs> situation. <laughs> If 610 functioned like this thing, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. Anyway. On to the next one. Uh, I'm just going to read how it is, because I think it would be funny that way. And, and this is the neutralized one, by the way, so it's going to be reassigned anyway. Okay. Description. Data expunged. Update. <laughs> SCP-257 ARC appears to be a several year old human sized skull with the addition of, of a pair of horns and writing on the more flat surfaces. The horns are in the middle of the parietal off to the either side of the skull. They are almost perfectly smooth and despite the actual shape of the horns being simple crescent moon shape all people viewing SCP-257-ARC in person or if I have a picture, ascribe them to look as looking humorous, while the exact same shape in any other material or picture draws no reaction. The writing on the skull covering most of the frontal, parietal, occipital, sophenoid, maxilla, and mandible sections is clearly legible etched in into a skull with near laser precision. The words are easily readable and seem to, be, to exist in English, French, German, Latin, and Chinese simultaneously. The messages written all seem to be curses and wishes for dark intent towards the reader of the words, though the vocab vocabulary, grammar, and syntax are juvenile at best. The messages reference hell, demons, and the writer being trickled quite often that's it trickled what the fuck is that i mean oh oh tricked quite often tricked like... <laughs> and there's like no like are there stories that goes along with this uh like a lot of like, dad expunged it? a lot of dad expunged dad expunged oh. a lot of dad expunged shit okay there... one terrible writing <laughs> Probably why it was Two. killed. Two. Why was this a key there again? I think because of the message. Just don't. It's just. It's just angry skull. That can be read by a multitude of different people. 
simultaneously. That, that's all the information we have because everything else is data expunged because the author got lazy. Oh, here's one of the messages on here. Oh, wait, no, this is Black Moon. Hell, never mind. Oh, here's the security alert. Uh, Dr. Redact is hereby authorized for immediate termination. Subject has been exposed to untested SCP. Engage with caution. Engage with lethal force. Repeat. Immediate termination. Security teams have been dispatched. All NC personnel report to nearest containment breach defense point. Traitor Spox at all caps. That's it. Well then. I... I I just have to I I'm sorry I'm I know I'm de I'm I know I'm beating a dead skull here, but why was this Keter? I don't know. Well, it probably I think the dead egg sponge was originally what it originally was, but they killed it off. For actual stories, at one point, it's just they've been expunged since it's now dead. <laughs> and while I do not remember the stories, I do remember that it was dangerous. Um, okay. I wonder if this was the skull, like, if you touch... I'm not sure if this is the same one, but I wonder if this was the skull where if you touch it, you'll be taken to the German camp or something. That could be the other another this SCP. One the, this one was one where I, I believe you would start... I don't remember... Oh man, I wish it kept its details after it was killed. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I wish you remembered what it did before we destroyed that. Expunge, expunge, expunge. <gasps> okay, so that okay, I did a, I did not know but that I when something is that it drove people insane if they looked at it too long. Oh, okay, I... that's what it did. Okay, I did not know that when an SCP gets neutralized, they just expunge all the data. Not I thought all that the was... times. Some they of them. All the time, but they do do that sometime, especially with the more dangerous ones. Okay, yeah. so... Okay, I was just thinking that that was the result of, like, the original author just getting no. lazy. No, there was no, a lot was... there, and then they destroyed it, because, you know what? This is dangerous, and we destroyed it, so it's like... I think but, it's uh, I think it's up to the author whether or not to expunge it, and I guess they decided to expunge it. Gotcha. Uh, of course, well, reassigned. It makes the lore a bit more interesting if it's there for a few years and then they just expunge it yeah. because it's dead. That makes it more mysterious or some shit. Yeah. I feel like that's just like a bullshit way of making it mysterious though. Like, his skull is horrible and dangerous and psychopathic. Let's just make it mysterious by killing it. Well, yeah, like, that's like that's the thing. Like, I think that I was fairly justified in my analysis. Like, ed like anyone who comes to this after this and doesn't yeah. know about yeah. the fact that that data originally was a story will just see this as being... Uh, dumb. Just, just really dumb. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, it kind of is dumb. Yeah. 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 I think it was mainly up it, to the author. It kind of is dumb, but it is for a different reason. Yeah. Either way. Alright. Ready Let's... for the next one? Yeah, I, I think we can safely say that we have efficiently beaten the dead skull <laughs> <laughs> anyway scp-259 is a fractal image known as the wisenglass spiral a completed rendering of scp-259 acts as an einstein rosen bridge opening a portal to an unknown location these locations access appear to vary depending on the size and orientation of the rendered image and having included an area filled with superheated plasma, an area populated with venomous cockroaches, a mm. deep spaces, 
deep space estimated to be redacted kilometers from a black hole, an area possibly corresponding to the dimension opened by SCP Redacted. Foundation mathemat mathematicians are working on determining why this specific fractal has anomalous properties and whether other similarly anomalous images exist. By O5 order, any image rendering related to SCP-259 experimentation must, be, must take place at least redacted meters from in inhabited areas. After incident K-259-1, 41 copies of CD capable of generating SCP-259 are were confiscated from redacted.com. And a public warning issued that the, C the CD labeled 100 fun fractals you can print contains a malicious virus that will destroy the user's computer. Redacted.com claimed to have obtained this from a reseller's bankruptcy sale and the foundation was unable to trace the original producer. Whether SCP-259 was released accidentally or distributed with knowledge of its anomalous properties is under investigation. Incident K-259-2 makes it clear that SCP-259 is being used with malicious intent. The Foundation is working with global anti-terrorism forces to retrieve SCP-259 from the organization responsible for this incident. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry, but isn't when they put K next to the uh to the SCP doesn't that mean like uh K class scenario? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't mean the end of the world scenario. So something really bad happened. <laughs> mm. Oh wait, I have incident K-259-1. Hold on, I can read it if you to find out. Okay. Uh, oh, well, you're going to have fun with this one. A residence hall at Redacted University was destroyed by explosion slash fire on Redacted. Authorities were mystified with that conditions at the center of the incident resembled the detonation of a small fusion-based device. Graduate student Redacted was completely vaporized as were Redacted others, including several who left shadows imprinted on the nearest standing walls. Questioning of survivors indicated that Redacted had gone to his room with, with a CD he had recently ordered from Redacted.com to play with some fractals, leading the eventual discovery of a program capable of rendering SCP-259 for sale on the site. So this picture vaporized a student. King hell. <laughs> Right. So, now, now we know why it was an interval scenario. <laughs> that we is. Don't vaporize students. No, they we would. don't vaporize students, child. Shame, shame. Anyway, um, yeah, that's fucking terrifying. Because, like, didn't it also mention that, like, uh, the portal? It's, size is based upon the viewer i i think um uh, hold on pair very depending on the size of radiation of the rendered image yeah so let's say for example this super bizarre terrorist organization that's doing this decides to somehow get that up on the new york jumbo screen yeah uh that's yeah, I think that's that, I think that's a very easy. Yeah, um, apparently the second incident caused a, a huge swarm of cockroaches and murdered a bunch of people. Like a lot of people. Yeah, so I I think that's a pretty easy end of the world <laughs> uh, scenario. I don't think we need to debate that one. <laughs> I agree that this does not need debate. End of the world. Uh, Hey, look, I got the picture right here. <laughs> here it goes. This is end of the world. If if you do not 
or if you oppose this statement, speak now or forever hold your peace. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just continue that. I did not think it was going to be that strong. It was just a fucking picture. Yeah, it's it's it just starts out, "Hey, we got this cool looking trippy image." Oh, whoops, it vaporized the student. Uh, <laughs> and that student had accidentally made it possible to purchase who knows where all these pictures are. Anyone around the world could just open it on a big laptop and poof, there goes a city. Oh no. What would happen if I they I mean, made... bombs also do the same thing. Wait, hold on. Well, yeah, but this Wait. is com this Wait. is an image. I got a question for what this. It... Wait, if, if, okay. Also, like, if there was, like, somebody who if they were like transferring like a fucking nuclear bomb or some shit poof we have a nuclear bomb now flying to <laughs> oh my gosh. a city also what would happen if someone made this an nft that scp well, no, no one no. really likes that. No. No. Oh, no. oh no oh no well if you screenshot it would it work I think so. I think it's just the picture. Yeah, if it's just the image itself. Yeah. What if it's altered? What if the image is altered? Maybe the effects would be different, oh, yeah. or it would probably probably might be different. Oh. I don't know. Oh. Well, like that's what that's. Well, you have to look at it, right? Wait, wait, wait. Stare at it long enough yeah. to alter it. Yeah. So you send in someone that's blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And he, but the thing is, being blind comes in like different layers, but like, or like different levels of blindness, but like any type of blindness could work. Because there are some types of blindness where you can see colors and stuff, but you can't see like clear images. So they could like kind of like see well enough to alter the image. Oh my god. It sounds so oh fucked up what you said at first, Drak. <laughs> I'm not going to sacrifice blind people. Blind people are cool. They've done, like, maybe some crimes? I don't know. Some blind people aren't that cool, but, like... <laughs> that um, <laughs> most blind people are chill. I actually follow this well, one Minecraft I guess, YouTube. I guess blind. we know who's getting... who's getting cancelled today. Yeah, dragon. Blind people are cool! Some are just criminals, okay? <laughs> anyway, on to the next oh, SCP. Case by case thing. are normal people like everyone else. Yep. Anyway, no uh, one in this voice call is normal. Right. Let me just let me just rephrase that to make it more easily apparent how how fucked that statement was. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, black people are je are fine. They're cool. Just some of them do crimes. <laughs> You sound like a race. You sound like a racist, except for black I'm people. I'm just very dumb. Well, and racists also... are very dumb too. Fair point. I don't know. We're like, I don't know. Blind people are cool. The but thing like, is, hey hatchet, the image, hey hatchet, right? hatchet, hatchet. I just so want to tell you something. Hell, well, this could work out with a blind people too. So just as long as you can't. Look, hey hatchet, I want to tell you something. As long as you cannot see, you don't even have to be blind. But as long as you cannot see. Then you can go in and edit it. Where the hey, Hatchet, I want to tell you something. Just so you know, oh Momo's watching God. the stream. Oh, no. I have... Yeah, Momo's... Oh! Oh, no. And PK is too. Yeah, PK is too. Oh, no. I've been cancelled. <laughs> Momo says, like, no, what the fuck are y'all on? <laughs> Worse though, actually, no, because what you said was far worse than what I said. No, I was what making I said was about like a disability. You were you said an entire fucking race. I was making an I was I used it as an example to show how fucked you were. <laughs> I am innocent of all crimes here. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to take. Mama's gonna oh. have to. Wait, hold on, hold on. I gotta say something. I gotta say something. Momo says, no, 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 no. Don't try and excuse it now, Hatch. <laughs> I was trying to clarify that the child was being fucked. How am I being put on blast now? I was just going like... I don't know. I was like... 
thing is, if you, ha you have to see the image, and if you cannot see at all, whether that be you have a blindfold or you are blind legally, then, you know. Also, here's the thing. I... Wait, actually, no, because this actually raises the question not even if, like, you can see the colors, if that'll actually kill you, too. Because that's the thing. Because that would be like, a fuck ton kind of people's people lives. People who are, who are even more. There's been yes, who are disabled. Oh, yeah, yeah shit. Also, here's yeah. the thing. How do you know if uh, messing with the picture won't make it worse? Fair point. Yeah. D yeah. Just don't fuck. You know what? Fuck it. Don't fuck with the image at all. Don't send anyone in there. Cause that, yeah. Yeah, but anyway. It took you that long to figure that out, child. <laughs> like, I was trying to grab it this way, but it was kind of fucked. You like... just were literally sick. Like, oh my gosh. That horror. Anyway, oh let's continue God. on with the next SCP.